Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 44 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about color spaces because these can be very handy or a good understanding of these can be very handy for your image processing needs. And first of all, uh, color spaces, of course, we are referring to color images where the color is represented in uh, many forms or can be represented in many forms. So the three popular color spaces that uh, we use in Python or image processing in general are RGB, HSV, and LAB. And let me provide a quick introduction or background of these three and then show you how uh, you know these can be used in Python. So first of all, RGB should be the most intuitive one or the one that you are probably most used to. So this is the stores information as red, green, and blue channels. So at every pixel, you have a value for red, for green, and blue, which means this is an additive color model. So for example, if you have yellow, it's a mixture of red and green, okay? Now, it stores this in uh, red, green, and blue, and both Scikit Image and OpenCV, the two primary image processing libraries that we're going to use, they read colors natively by default as RGB. But one thing to note, again, I mentioned this a few times in the past, is Scikit Image stores RGB as RGB. So if you look at here, this column represents red, this represents green, this represents blue. So at this pixel, there is seven red, 69 value for green and 61 for blue. But the same image when opened using OpenCV, the values are the same because we're not changing that, but the order is different. You see how blue is first now, and then comes green and then comes red, okay? This is something you need to keep in mind, but, but otherwise there is no difference between these two. And uh, every pixel is represented by, as you can see, a value of red, a value of green, and a value of blue. So it's very intuitive. So because we can think about, okay, a mixture of equal amounts of green and blue almost here is giving us some sort of a, uh, you know, light shade color right, uh, right here. I guess that's cyan. Now, HSV stores color information, as the name suggests, as hue, saturation, and value. This can be a bit, not that intuitive, but then uh, think of it as HSV is separating the luma or luminosity or the uh, information in the image into this luma and then into uh, chroma. Okay, as the name suggests, again, chroma means color information. So you have one channel representing image intensity and you have two channels, which is uh, hue and saturation representing the color information. Okay, now why do you need HSV and where to use HSV? Think of applications where you need to change only uh, the intensity information and not the color information, like something like histogram equalization. If you actually apply histogram equalization to all these color channels, the output would look a bit weird and we'll try that uh, later on. Graphically, you can see this. Uh, saturation is the amount of that color, you know, being brighter and brighter. And uh, hue itself is what color is it? And value is how much of it, yeah? Now, very similar to HSV, there is something called LAB lab, or sometimes referred to as CIE lab. And L stands for lightness. Again, this is the intensity information. A is the color, one of the color channels that goes from green to red, and B is another color channel that goes from blue to yellow. This is another representation of this color image. Now, again, when to use LAB, for all practical purposes, I see no difference between using HSV or LAB. You can use either of these. Of course, if you're doing, like for example, segmentation using color space, yeah, there will be some difference. There will be a slight difference between these two, but then uh, for most tasks, not enough to actually worry about any of this. So I recommend using, go ahead and using HSV, and whenever you need to apply like a grayscale function, then go ahead and do it on uh, the channel V, which is the value or intensity. Again, LAB, here is the color space. As you can see, it's going from green to red, a is going from green to red and B is going from blue to yellow. Okay, so let's actually jump into the uh, spider interface and have a quick look at it. Again, I don't wanna repeat a lot of things I've already done in the past uh, lectures, but then it may actually uh, help sometimes. Now, I created a new environment for this tutorial because I'm, I wanted to install the latest scikit image just to make sure that uh, every all of you can actually repeat what I'm trying to do. So in case you wonder, I'm using Python 3.7, and for scikit image, I'm using SK image version. 
I believe 0.17.2. Okay, 0.18 is like an experimental beta version as of now. This is mid-May 2020. Okay, so 0.17.2. Okay, and I'll actually mix both OpenCV and Scikit image because if you look at Scikit image documentation, most of the stuff I'm covering, you can find it in Scikit image documentation. But I'll just show you a couple of uh, use cases using OpenCV so you can see how things can be actually uh, mixed and matched here. Okay, so uh, importing OpenCV, importing Scikit image, I mean IO, input output from our Scikit image. And first, let's read our color image using OpenCV. Again, how do you do that? You just give the image path and then put a one down here representing color. Zero represents grayscale. Okay, same thing with Scikit image. Instead of one and zero, you do as gray equals to false or as gray equals to two. Uh, true. So if I run this, almost instantaneously up here, you should actually see, I don't even know why grayscale, oh, uh, let's actually run the whole thing one more time. I'm a bit surprised at this uh, gray open CV uh, showing up as none type object. That actually happens when there is no image. Uh, oh, so, sorry about this, dot TIF. Okay, so now there will be an image. So let's run this one more time. Um, looks like I made too many mistakes. Okay, this should be the end of all mistakes. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. Okay, so there you go. So now we have all numbers for all of these. So you can see uh, color open CV and uh, color scikit image. Again, as you can uh, look at these numbers, the RGB and BG are kind of swapped, but the values are pretty much the same. Okay, and uh, look at the size of each of these, 481 by 600 by three, that's the size of my image, 481 in height. Again, the first always represents height, second one width, and third one is the channels. So in this example, the three channels are red, green, and blue, because that's the default for OpenCV and Scikit image. So these three represent, if I open it, and if I go to the third channel, right, zero stands for your height, width, and this is the channel. So here, if you actually uh, look at index zero, index one, index two, okay? So RGB, so this one is R. The 60 value right there is red, okay? Now if I go up and then one, there should be a value of, let's say in this case, uh, 75, that is green, yeah, for the first pixel. Again, this is probably something you already know from my previous tutorials, but I just wanna make sure we are all on the same page. So for grayscale images, there are no channels because it's just one image with uh, uh, pixel values, that's it, okay? Let's ignore our gray image from now on, okay? We don't need the gray image anymore. I just need color. Also, even this, I can kind of gray out. We just need one image. So uh, I've written a few lines again, as usual, so we don't waste uh, time typing, but let me just show you a couple of things here. Now, uh, so this is by default a, we have three channels here, right? So now I'm actually splitting each channel using cv2.split. Yeah, again, I showed this in previous tutorial and I'm calling the first one B because uh, when you read image using OpenCV, the first one is blue. We just mentioned that, BGR. And now I'm just showing you the three channels. So if I open this, and there's a reason why I want to show you this, you can see the information here, why it is amazing to split this into blue, green, and red, especially uh, fluorescence images, something like this, where you already pre-segmented your image, for example, nuclei that are stained in DAPI, they appear in blue, so if you only look at blue channel, you get all the nuclei which makes your segmentation problem easy. If you look at your green channel, again, you have a lot of mess going on. And if you look at red channel, you have other cytoplasmic area showing up right around here. So blue is the one that you can use to uh, segment these nuclei. Now you can see uh, if your job or if your goal is to segment the nuclei, then you're good with B, uh, RGB image. Now, if your goal is to do histogram equalization or some task, then applying it on these three individual channels will result in very undesired uh, results, I should say. So we have to convert those into HSV channels. So let me overwrite this. I'll share this. Uh, 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 I mean, you can see the code and you can write it. And at some point, I'll actually share all the uh, code with you guys. But to convert this into HSV image, 
it's again you can convert it into hsv and scikit image or opencv or any of these but i try to stick with one library when our, when i'm doing these tasks okay cv2.cvt uh, color and your input image is color uh, let's actually use our color uh, opencv and then my cv2.color in here i'm changing bgr to hsv okay and everything else is very straightforward now i'm splitting individual channels hs and first of all let's run this run this line so you can see up here my hsv image also has the same dimensions right 481 by 600 by 3 except in this case the 3 here stand it doesn't stand for rgb it stands for hsv okay so hsv so i'm splitting it so let's look at each channel now by plotting it so here you go so my hue and saturation hue is again the color so blue shows up right there and the green is right here red is somewhere in here and saturation is how much uh, of that yeah saturation is the amount of that color uh, and value let me kill these two so you can focus on the value value looks like a nice grayscale image as you can see now if you want to do any sharpness you know if you want to increase the sharpness of your images and a few other like median filtering for example uh, edge detectors and histogram equalization you can do all of that on this channel and combine it uh, with the color after the processing in fact in the next tutorial let's actually do that exactly so let's finish this by showing you how to do the lab lab image and again you can use lab or hsv it's up to you so let's actually do lab image right now again let's focus on our opencv image again instead of uh, bgr to hsv now we are doing to lab and i'm extracting l a and b channels separately and now let's run this one more time so here it is so these look very uh, i mean the l channel which is the luminance channel this looks very similar to the v channel from hsv right because we are extracting the intensity information the other two channels are color. So you can use this image for the for processing, like I mentioned earlier. And these two, again, B is going from, I always forget, blue to something. B is going from blue to yellow, I believe. Uh, blue to yellow. And then A is going from green to red. Okay. So those are these two images, blue to yellow and green to red. Okay. So now you know the at least the top three color channels. And in the next tutorial, let's actually uh, uh, use this operation to apply it to certain uh, to apply certain filters to these color images because you know most of the filters, uh, especially in scikit image and OpenCV, are designed for grayscale images for good reason. Now, how do we apply those for color images? And I'll show you uh, a trick on how to do that. So please stay tuned and subscribe to this channel. And thank you very much for your attention.